Hey, what's going on, guys? Then we are for simple snippets, and welcome back to another video tutorial on data structures and algorithms. And let's continue our heap data structure topic. So, in the previous couple of videos, we've started off with heap data structure. We've already seen the theory and what exactly is a heap data structure, and we also started off with the implementation. So, as you can see on the screen, this is what the heap data structure class looks like. It has three data members, and it has n number of member functions. The standard heap data structure operations. This is something that we already saw in the previous video. In fact, we also started off with the programming part, that is the practical implementation side. We are using C++ programming, so we created a menu-driven program, and we started off with the implementation. Now, in this video, as the title of the video suggests, we are going to do the insertion operation. So, this is the insert key function that we are going to see thoroughly in this tutorial. So, not only are we going to see the working and dry run the pseudo code step by step using diagrams. But also write a C++ program to do the implementation and execute our program in this tutorial. So make sure you watch this video till the end. And with that being said, let's start off with insertion operation. Okay, so as you can see on the screen on the left hand side, we have the entire pseudo code for insert key that is insert a value in the heap data structure, right? Now I'm assuming you guys already know what is a heap data structure, what is a min heap, what is a max heap, and how it looks like. We've already discussed all that in previous tutorials. So make sure you watch that. But just to give you a basic example, since we are implementing min heap, let me you know quickly create a min heap over here. So as you can see on the screen, this is a simple example of a min heap. The property of min heap is that for every node, its parent node has to be having a lesser value than its own value, right? So this is the main concept of min heap, and for max heap, it is exactly opposite. So for every node, for example, let's say this is the root node. It does not have any parent, so let's take this example. For this node, since it is a min heap, its parent needs to have a value lesser than its own value. So 10 is obviously greater than 5, right? So 5 is smaller than 10, so that's why it is a valid heap. Again, for this node, its parent is 5, so 5 is less than 7. So again, it is a valid heap, right? So this is the very main concept of min heap or max heap for that matter. And this property needs to be always true. And it is also a binary tree, right? It is a complete binary tree. So now let's say you want to add one more value, right? So what you're doing is you're inserting a new value. So let's say I want to insert the value and the value is three. Okay. So the way we insert is we insert it in order properly. So we will first insert it in a complete binary way from top to bottom, left to right. So the leftmost child will be added first and then we will proceed over here. Then we'll proceed over here in this order. Correct. So right now we added a new node over here, but now this is not following the property of min heap because for this node, its parent node is 10, which is greater than its own value. So the lesser value has to be on the top, right? So in a min heap, the smallest value is always going to be at the root position. You can see three is the smallest one. So once we insert this, what we will do is now we will perform the swapping. So how do you perform swapping? You will check this value three and you'll compare it with its parent node 10. So since three is smaller than 10, three has to be the parent of 10, right? It cannot be the child of 10. This is defying the mini property. So now we will perform the swapping. So three will come at the place of 10 and 10 will go down. Now this will again repeat itself. So we got three over here, but still three is smaller than five, correct? So again, we will compare three with its parent. So who's the parent of three now? It is five. So you'll make the comparison is three less than five. Yes. So again, we will have to do the swapping. Correct. So again, three will go at the place of five and five will come over here. Now, of course, we don't have any more parent to compare, but you get the idea, right? So now again, this entire tree is following the min heap property, which is it is a complete binary tree. Yes, it is a complete binary tree. And it is also following the property that for a particular node, its parent is lesser than its own value or its child is larger than its own value. You can put it in both the ways. So for this node five, its parent is always going to be smaller and its children are always going to be greater. Okay. That's how the property works for min heap and it is exactly opposite for max heap. Okay. So let's add one more value now. Let's see how the process goes again. Let's say you want to add a new value and let's say the value is four. Okay. So you insert it in order properly at the bottom because it is a, it has to be a complete binary tree, right? So you'll have to add nodes at the very bottom at the end that is at the leaf level and from left to right. Okay. Now, once you add that, you'll again have to check whether when you add the new node, 
is it following the mini property or not and clearly you can see it is not because 4 is smaller than 5 so if 4 is smaller than 5 it cannot be its child it has to be its parent so now we'll again have to do the swapping so again you'll do the comparison so you'll say is 4 less than 5 yes so you'll have to do the swap so 4 will come at 5's place and 5 will go below now when we take 4 over here you'll have to make a comparison of 4 with its parent again because we don't know what will be there at the root right we'll have to be very sure whether this newly swapped position is correct for this particular node so we'll compare 4 with 3 and now is 4 less than 3 no so now this is following the proper property of min heap because 4, it cannot be its parent it has to be its child so this means that 4 is in its correct place so you don't need to swap over here and now again if you observe this entire tree is a min heap tree because it is following both the principles that it is a complete binary tree and it is also following the property where for every node its children are smaller than its own value or for every node its parent is larger than its own value correct all right so keeping this ideology in mind how do you take this and convert it into implementable code because ultimately we want to write a c++ program right we want to implement this kind of feature so this was just the rough diagrammatic working but how do you convert it into implementable code so this is where this pseudo code comes into picture okay so now let's try to dry run this pseudo code step by step okay so now let's start off with dry running this pseudo code and we will see how insertion works step by step when it comes to the implementation side so do keep in mind that we have three variables three data members one is int h array that is a pointer to the array we have int capacity which is the capacity of the heap array which is going to be taken from the user and we also have the heap size which will keep a track of the current number of elements in the main heap right so these are the three elements or three data members that you need to keep in mind so when you are saying insert key that is you are inserting a value you will take the value and pass it as an argument which is going to be k okay so let's say for example the capacity of our heap which we have taken from the user is 7 so in the memory in the program a array will be created so you'll say h arr so it's going to be a pointer right so it is going to point to an array and the size of the array is going to be 7 correct right so we have a array we'll call it h array its size is 7 so the indexes go from 0 to 6 in an array right now currently the heap size is going to be 0 because when we create the heap it is going to be empty right and heap size keeps the track of number of elements in the min heap so right now heap size is 0 okay so let's keep a track of these variables and let's start off with insert key let's say you want to insert key k value as 5 okay so k is going to be equal to 5 let's go inside step number one we check if heap size is equal equal to capacity then we print overflow or we say heap full right now heap size is 0 you can see over here and capacity is 7 so is 0 equal equal to 7 no right so this first step will be excluded right so 1 1.1 and 1.2 these steps will not be executed because heap is not full we can clearly see that the heap is empty right now so step number one will not be executed we'll move to step two now we will say heap size plus plus so heap size will become one because since we've figured out that the heap is not full which means that we are going to proceed with the insertion right so we'll make heap size equal to one at this step then we will say i is equal to heap size minus one so we create a new variable let's create that new variable over here i equals to heap size minus 1 what is the heap size we just made it 1 so 1 minus 1 is going to be 0 correct so i becomes 0 heap size is 1 now we say h array of i equals to k so k is nothing but the value that we want to insert correct h array of i what is i i just became 0 so h array of i means this index position and we say equals to k so k is the value that we want to insert so we insert 5 at index position 0 because i is 0 right so at index position 0 we will insert 5 all right now since we have inserted a new value we need to make sure that it is following the min heap principle right remember the main principle of min heap is that for every node its parent should be having a less value correct so that is something that we have to make that check so this step number 5 is a while loop which does that check how does it do that we check if i not equal to 0 and h array of parent is greater than h array of i 
So parent is nothing but a separate function, which we will talk about in a minute. Basically, it returns the value of parent of the current index. And we'll talk about it in a minute. But right now, i is equal to zero, correct? Where is i? i is over here. i is equal to zero. So the while loop condition itself becomes false. So this while loop will execute only when i is not equal to zero and the parent of i is greater than the child. So this is for parent and this is the current element that we are at, which is going to be the child. But right now i is equal to zero. So this while loop will not be executed and it makes sense, right? Because currently we have only inserted one value in the heap array, which means that it is going to be the root. So for the root value, there is not going to be a value above it. So this part will not be executed right now. And we have successfully inserted our very first value. Okay. Let's insert one more value. So I hope you already know by now that we are implementing heap data structure in the form of array, right? There are two types of implementations. We've talked about that in previous tutorial. We can either go the conventional node creation and linking the nodes using pointers way, or you can implement heap data structure using arrays. And we're using arrays and we're using the mathematical calculation formulas for parent left and right child, which you can see on the screen right now to perform the linking. Okay. It is much more easier and efficient to implement heap data structure using arrays. Okay. So now let's insert one more new value. Let's say the K value is equal to seven. Okay. Now we want to insert K equals to seven. So first thing we check if heap size is equal, equal to capacity right now, heap size is one capacity is seven. So it is not equal. So we will completely exclude step number one. We will move to step number two. Step number two says heap size plus plus, which means we will increment the heap size. Let's increment that and make it two. step three says I is equal to heap size minus one. So I is going to be heap size, which is two minus one. So I is going to be one. So I basically now points at index position one. Correct. All right. Next thing we insert K K is seven. We place it at H area of I. I is one. We just said that. So H area of I means index position one. This is where we are inserting K. What is the value of K? K is seven. So let's insert seven over here. All right. The insertion is done. Now, of course, we need to make a check because diagrammatically, let me draw diagrammatically how the heap is looking like. So diagrammatically, this is how the heap would look like. When I say diagrammatically, it means that in the memory, it is stored as an array, but it is working like a heap, right? So visually you can visualize it like this. All right. So we just inserted seven over here as the left child of five, but now we need to make sure that this child that we just inserted seven that we just inserted, it has to be greater than its parent, right? Because in min heap, the minimum value is always going to be the parent. Correct. So let's make that check over here. We'll move to step number five. We'll check while I not equal to zero. I this time is equal to be one. So I is not equal to zero, which means that this condition has become true. There is an and clause in between, which means that both the conditions need to be true. So we'll say and H array of parent of I. So this parent of I means parent of what is the value of I? I is one. So who's going to be parent of one? So this parent function is a separate function, which I'll quickly show you. So this is that parent function, which simply calculates a formula and gives us the parent. So parent of one is what we are calculating, right? Because I is one, I is this index position and we want its parent. Of course, by diagram, we know that parent of seven is five, but how does it look like programmatically? How can we get that? Right? We need to create our own function and this is the formula. So when you pass one over here, we are saying return I, I is one, one minus one divided by two. So one minus one is zero, zero by two is going to be zero. So we are returning zero. So basically what we are getting over here is H array of zero and H array of zero is nothing but five. Correct. So we got the parent that is the value of H array of zero is nothing but five. The index position is zero, but the value at index position zero is five. So we got five is 5 greater than h array of i h array of i is nothing but h array of 1 which is 7 is 5 greater than 7 no so this condition did not become true this condition is true the first condition is true but this condition is not true and when you have an and clause in between both the conditions need to be true for the while loop to execute but because this second condition is not true 5.1 and 5.2 will not be executed 
and we will simply exit outside the insert key function. So this means that the second value is inserted in the proper position. We don't need to do any kind of swapping. So this while loop is only executed when we need that kind of swapping. So in case if this value was smaller than five, which we will see right now, then we would have needed swapping. So let's insert one more value now. Let's say the value that you want to insert is k equals to four. Okay. Now we want to insert four. We will go inside. We'll check if heap size is equal equal to capacity. Heap size is two. Capacity is seven. Is it equal? No. So again, these two statements will not be executed. We will only exit the insert key operation when the heap size is equal equal to capacity because we can't insert more values because the heap array will be full. That time we will execute return and we'll just print out a statement heap is full. Okay. But right now these two statements will not be executed. We'll move forward. We'll say heap size plus plus. Now heap size will now become three, right? This is where we are keeping a track of these variables. So heap size becomes three. Then we say i is equal to heap size minus one. Heap size just became three. Three minus one is going to be equal to two. So at index position two, h array of i that is two because i just became two over here, right? So i has now become two. So at index position two, we are inserting k. K is nothing but four. So at index position two, we are inserting the new value four. All right. So insertion is done. Diagrammatically, this is where we have inserted four. Correct. And now we also have to make a check whether this newly inserted value is following the mini principle. So again, at step number five, we say while i not equal to zero, i is two, which means i is not equal to zero. So this is true. So first condition becomes true. The second condition is parent of i. Parent of i means parent of two. Correct. Because i has become two. What is the parent of two? When you pass two over here in the function, you'll get two minus one. Divide by two, so one by two, so one by two is nothing but zero point five, correct? But you can see the return type of parent function is int. So remember, a integer data type only stores the integral part; it does not store the fractional part. So when you are returning one by two, you are essentially returning zero. Okay? So zero will be returned over here. So what we got is h array of zero, and h array of zero is nothing but five. Correct. So five is what we are getting, which we are getting as the correct parent. You can see in the diagram also, parent of four is five right now. So is five greater than h array of i? i is two. So at index position two, we have four. Is five greater than four? Yes. So now this condition also has become true. So since both the conditions are true, what we will do is we will go inside and we will say swap these two elements. That is h array of i and h array of parent of i. the the ones that we are just comparing we are just comparing 5 and 4 over here right so this is index position 0 this is index position 1 and this is index position 2 when you are speaking in terms of the array right so we are comparing these two elements right now and once we figure out that 5 is greater than 4 that is the parent is greater than its child we have to do the swapping so this is where we create one more function swap and this is basic swapping so just to show you the function let me just quickly show it to you This is the basic swap function, and I hope you know how to do swapping. You can either do swapping by pass by address or pass by reference. This is pass by reference. If you don't understand the difference, I have a separate tutorial in my C plus plus playlist specifically on swapping. Do check that out. So we over here we swap these two. Once we do that, we will get four at this place. We will get five at this place. So after doing this, what we do is we say i is equal to parent of i. So i currently is two, right? So when you say parent of i, it will return this function again. So i is two. When you pass two over here, you are saying two minus one divided by two. So you are returning one by two. Basically, you are returning zero point five. And since it is a int type, you are only returning zero. So now i becomes zero. So when i becomes zero, you again go at the start of the while loop, and over here again you make that check while i not equal to zero. But since i is zero, basically what you did is you made i again point to The parent node, because in case if there were more nodes above, you'll have to check that with the above node as well. Correct. So this while loop will keep on checking from bottom to top whether the mini property is followed or not. And if it is followed, then you leave the while loop. But if not, then you'll have to do the swapping. But since now i has become zero, and this while loop will only execute when i is not equal to zero, we'll stop over here, and we have done the insertion properly. 
so now you can see even from the diagram in the code four will come at this position in the array and five will be coming at this position after the swapping so now this is a proper min heap correct so this is the entire pseudo code what i would recommend you guys is insert a few more values and follow this pseudo code step by step to get the better understanding because now when you insert one more node let's say you insert a new node and let's say the value of this new node inserted is 3 okay so this time 3 will be compared with 7 and it will be swapped with 7 and then 3 will come over here and 3 will be also compared with 4 so this time the while loop will run two times okay so i'll recommend you guys that pause this video take a pen and paper take a pencil and paper and dry run this pseudo code at least once for the best understanding step by step and then you'll realize how the swapping works how the array is tracked and then you'll understand much more better how the functioning works internally and you can keep a track of all the different variables okay so now that you've got the overall understanding and the working of the insert operation we've dry run the pseudo code and we've understood it with the help of diagram what is happening at every step let's jump to the c id and let's try to implement this pseudo code in the form of c code so that we complete the practical aspect okay so as you can see this is the code that we've already typed in the previous tutorial we created the basic structure of our program. We created the three data members. We created some member functions like the parameterized constructor. We created linear search, which we still have not used in our program as of now. We created the print array function, which will print out all the values in the heap. We also created the int height function. So below that, we will first create three more functions, which are basically the formulas for int parent, int left and int right. So parent, as we already saw, will give us the parent of a particular node or particular index. The left will give us the left child. The right will give us the right child. These are the formulas that basically do the linking in the array. Okay. So this is something that we've seen previously in theory, but this is how programmatically they look like. And after this, we will also create a swap function, right? We need to do the swapping, remember? So for that, we also have to type some code. So what we'll do is we'll create the swap function above our min heap class because it is not necessary to keep this swap function inside this class right swapping is basically not a part of min heap standard operation it is not a standard min heap operation correct so you can keep it outside and this is the code for swapping i hope you know how you can do swapping this is swapping using reference method but you can also do swapping using pointers so for that the syntax will change a little bit and if you don't know that you can check out that video as i mentioned but coming down again at the last of our class this is where we will do the insert function okay so this is the entire insert key operation and i copy pasted the code that is because i don't want to waste time typing every single line of code that is because this function is exactly what we saw in the pseudo code also so i'll put the pseudo code on the right hand side you can see step number one is we have to check whether the heap size is equal to the capacity and then you can see 1.1 and 1.2 is this two statements like what we have in the pseudo code then we have two, three and four as these three steps in the pseudo code. And then the last step number five is where we do the checking of the parent and child relationship, right? Okay. So this is the insert key operation. I highly recommend that you guys type it at least once with your own hands. Don't copy paste this. You'll of course get the entire code on our website. So I'll share that link in the video description where you can check out this code. But if you're a beginner for that, I'll highly recommend that you type the code. So now scrolling down in the main function, this is where our menu driven program is. We are taking the option number from the user. So this is where we are doing the insert operation, right? We're taking the value from the user in this variable val. And now we will say obj dot insert key. So we just created this insert key operation in the class. This obj is nothing but object of min heap class. We've created the min heap class. We take the size from the user. That is the size of the min heap. We create the object and then we perform the different operations. So this is where we're doing the insertion operation. Let's also do the printing operation because you want to see the values being printed, right? So print array is nothing but this function which will simply print out the heap array using a for loop. It will go from zero till the heap size. So let's save this. Let's go to execute, compile and run. Right now we are only looking at the insertion operation. So hopefully everything should work fine. And there you go. Our program is working perfectly fine. Initially, it is asking for the size of the array. We'll enter seven hit enter. Now we are saying min heap created. And now we are being presented with all the different heap operations. So option number one is for insert. So hit option one, hit enter. 
now you can see insert operation enter the value to insert in the heap let's enter 5 when you hit enter the value is inserted i haven't shown a message that value is inserted but since the program is continuing to show us the menu it means that the value is inserted let's actually go and select option 7 option 7 is for printing the heap values so when i hit option 7 and hit enter you can see print heap array and we have one value in the array which is 5 let's insert one more value by selecting option number 1 over here hit enter let's say you want to enter the value 8 when i hit enter the value is inserted and again let me print out the value by selecting option 7 and now we have 5 and 8 correct so we have two values inserted diagrammatically you can see on the screen how it must be looking let's insert one more value let's insert 7 let's do the printing we'll get 5 8 and 7 and diagrammatically you can see how the values are now let's insert one more value and let's say the value is 3 so remember 3 is the smallest value right now so it should come at the root level correct so when i hit enter the value is inserted i'm not showing a message i should have done that in the code but i can do that easily later on but now when i print out the value so by printing the array and when i hit enter you can see that the first value is 3 which means that 3 has come onto the top and now you can see diagrammatically how the heap would look like although it is an array it is functioning like a heap okay so this means our insertion code is working perfectly fine our swapping is working perfectly fine the parent function is also working perfectly fine and we have successfully implemented the insertion in min heap okay all right so i'm gonna wrap up this video over here i hope you've understood the entire working of insertion in heap especially in min heap we've seen the pseudocode we've seen the working we dry run it we saw the diagrams and we also implemented it in c plus plus code so if you've watched it so far and like the video please give this video a like it really helps a lot definitely let me know in the comments how this video was do share it with your friends turn on the notifications for further videos on this topic and i'll see you guys in the next one peace